Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a 2006 drama film, titled Akila and the Bee. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. This is the story of Akila Anderson, an 11-year-old girl who doesn't seem to fit in quite well. She studies in southern Los Angeles at Crenshaw Middle School, a poor conditioned place with primarily African-American students. In the middle of her class, Ms. Cross is handing out some tests, and she particularly catches Akila's eye. She asks her if she studied for the test, and Akila replies that she did not, causing her classmates to mock her. Ms. Cross asks to see her after school, as she needs to speak privately. To her surprise, Akila realizes that she actually got an excellent grade. After class, Ms. Cross tells her the potential she has as a student, contrasting with Akila's subdued attitude, not making her homework and sometimes skipping classes. She also tells Akila about the school's first spelling bee next week, endorsing her to sign up. Akila talks to her friend Georgia on the streets while a homeless man begs for alms, and they see the new car of Derek Tees, a neighborhood bully. When Georgia asks if she will enter the spelling bee, Akila replies that she's not interested and thinks it's stupid. Despite this, Akila enjoys winning games of Scrabble on her computer as a hobby in the evening. She's called to dinner, and her family chats with Devin, Akila's brother who studies to be an airline pilot, as they haven't seen each other in a while. However, he tells his family that he hasn't flown a plane so far, still staying in control rooms, with his mother Tanya glad that he doesn't have to do such dangerous work yet. Akila has a good relationship with her brother, urging her to continue her studies. Her mother asks Akila to turn off the TV, but Devin tells her to change the channel instead. Coincidentally, Akila ends up tuning into a spelling bee and is surprised by its size and recognition. The girl on screen wins the national contest, and the entire audience cheers her on. Back in her room, Akila researches the word the girl spelled while remembering her father, who used to play Scrabble with her before dying. Akila researches and transcribes words to learn their correct spelling, a practice she does for much of the night. A week later, Akila is harassed by a pair of bullies at the start of school, wanting to force her to do her English homework. Parallel to this, Principal Welch talks to visiting English teacher Dr. Joshua Larrabee, and they find the girls fighting. Welch breaks up the fight but calls Akila and asks if she has signed up for the spelling bee yet, but she denies it. In Principal Welch's office, he praises Akila's spelling skills, but criticizes her for skipping classes. Welch asks if she knows about the script's national spelling bee, and she comments that she watched the finals last week. He explains that several young students compete in regional competitions to make it to the national spelling bee in Washington, D.C., and that he wants one of his students to be in that year's competition. Whoever wins the next school competition that day may participate in the next district competition the following month. Akila has no interest in representing her school because of its poor educational conditions and comfort for the students. Still, Principal Welch insists her to do so. Akila mentions how everyone will make fun of her if she competes and wins, so Welch resorts to putting her in detention for half the semester for all her absences. She agrees to participate against her will, so the competition begins. It all starts a little uneven, as the kids are not used to that kind of event, but when Akila comes to the front, she says her first word correctly. Time marches on, and Akila ends up in the finals with the word fanciful, which she spells without a problem, winning the competition. As her friend Georgia and the audience celebrate, everything is interrupted when Mr. Larrabee stands up and speaks directly to Akila, requesting her off to spell prestidigitation. Despite the parry Ms. Cross tries to make as she considers Akila too young for that level of spelling, Principal Welch allows her to continue. Under everyone's gaze, Akila ends up spelling the word right. Hence, Mr. Larrabee continues to throw out complex expressions that the girl spells without a problem, at least until she gets to the word pulchritude, which she spells wrong. Akila is taunted by her bullies and ends up running away. She is overtaken by Principal Welch, who encourages her by saying that she did everything right, and Dr. Larrabee seconds him by saying that people are actually afraid of her intellect, and that she need a coach to advance further. Nevertheless, Akila leaves with the bitter thought of not participating in spelling bees again. Georgia encourages her back home, but Akila is dispirited, saying Larrabee's words were misleading but not hard. The following day Akila is awakened by her brother Devin, who is about to leave again. He tells her that she should continue with the competitions because of how good she is, appealing to their father and his love for words. Akila agrees, asking Principal Welch for at least a new outfit for the competitions, but he tells her that she has to finish in the top 10 in the district first, and to do that, she must train hard with Dr. Larrabee. She hesitates, and Principal Welch gives her a copy of last year's competition. Akila is intimidated to see the contest at home. Even worse, her brother Terence shows up, discouraging her by saying she will lose to a bunch of white kids. Upon visiting Dr. Larrabee, Akila finds him tending to his plants. He starts teaching her about his knowledge of both words and competition history, explaining that the first thing to do is learn winning words and their origins. Larrabee criticizes her ghetto talk and says that she has to speak correctly before him from now on. However, friction between them causes Larrabee to resign, but not before being insulted with complex words by Akila. 
She begins to study on her own, but when she asks her mother if she will see her at the competition, Tanya says she only sees the contest as a game and that her sister Kiana is the one who will accompany her. At the end of registration, Aquila meets Javier Mendez, a boy who made it to DC, placing 13th. He tells her about Dylan Chu, one of the most formidable spelling competitors who placed second in the national competition. Aquila struggles in her first round, feeling pressured by the crowd, but makes it through to the next one. The match progresses, and Larrabee watches everything from a distance, noting Aquila's progress. Eleven competitors are left, about to decide who will be the top ten that will pass to the regional finals in Southern California, but just as this is announced, Kiana's baby starts to cry, interrupting the competition. Aquila sends her sister out so they can continue. In her turn, Aquila must spell the word synecdoche, which she finds pretty complex and ends up spelling wrong. During the last turn, the finalist kid must spell Carmagnol, and in his ignorance, he's secretly helped by his mother in the audience. Kiana, who watched the competition from afar, notices this and interrupts the match to announce the cheating. When the lady is questioned, she denies it, blaming the burden given to the children in the competitions. However, her son confesses, giving Aquila another chance to win and qualify for regionals. Upon returning home, the girls find their mother scolding Terence for his criminal activities outside the house. Before going to sleep, Aquila considers joining a spelling group that Javier had told her about. She travels to Javier's school the next day, where she meets Dylan Chu. Dylan tells her that he studies on his own and commands her to spell Xanthosis, but Aquila fails. He demoralizes her and leaves her alone. Aquila trains along with Javier and a couple of his friends, getting along well with everyone. Aquila thinks that place is better for her than her school, and when she returns home, she finds her mother waiting for her angrily. Aquila hadn't told her that she would study on her own, and her mother tells that she would have to do summer school to make up for her absences. Aquila now insists on the competition, but her overwhelmed mother doesn't feel it's in her best interest, so she forces her to quit. However, Aquila ends up signing up the permission using a fake signature. She shows up in front of Larrabee the next day, showing him how focused she is on the project, and asks him to be her coach. Larrabee tells her that she was lucky in the past competition, but she must try harder to win. When he asks her what her goals are, she only tells him she can spell. After a few words of support, Larrabee agrees to be her coach, but requires her total commitment. Aquila then goes to Javier's birthday party with Georgia, but her friend is intimidated that there are only white kids, leaving Aquila alone. Javier talks to her, raising her spirits and even kissing her cheek. They then go downstairs to learn that Dylan brought several Scrabble boards to play on, with Aquila facing Dylan. As Dylan gains more points than everyone, Aquila makes substantial advances. Still, the intimidated Dylan manages to come back. The clock ticks down and only Dylan and Aquila are left competing, but the former ends up narrowly winning. Javier tells Aquila that no one has ever come this close to beating Dylan. As Aquila goes around Javier's house, she finds Dylan's father scolding him for almost losing to a black girl in a board game. During training with Larrabee, Aquila complains about his methods, saying they are slow and inefficient. Now Larrabee demonstrates how complex words are made up of smaller, simpler ones, deconstructing the language and learning the roots of words. It is then that the training continues, with Aquila learning terms, their meanings, origins, and uses. When she remarks to her mother to see her at the competition, she deflects the conversation, feeling nostalgic over the loss of her husband. In another conversation with Larrabee, he spotlights to Aquila a peeve she has, slapping her hand against her with each spelling. Hence, he decides to give her a jump rope. It turns out that each child has a different method of spelling, and Aquila's is to keep time, so she must take advantage of this for her competition. From now on, Aquila trains jumping the rope, improving in the process. At the regional competition, it is mentioned that only the top three will advance to the nationals. Several children are disqualified, and as things progress, Tanya shows up at the event in anger. She makes a fuss to Principal Welch about telling her daughter not to compete, distracting Aquila in her turn. Despite that, the girl makes it through her round, but Welch calls Aquila to talk to her mother in the middle of the competition. They allow Aquila to do so, but she has to come back quickly to not be disqualified. Outside, she confesses using a fake signature on the participation form, making her mother furious about it. As an argument takes place, Javier tries to buy time in the competition for Aquila. Larrabee introduces himself to Tanya as her daughter's coach, and Welch tells her that Aquila is getting extra credit at school for doing this competition. When Tanya asks Aquila why she kept all this hidden from her, Aquila replies that every time she brought up the subject, she didn't want to hear it. It is decided that Aquila's punishment will be double duties for the next three months, managing to return to the stage on time, thanks to Javier. Now with her mother's permission, Aquila can go on to place third, only surpassed by Dylan and Javier, respectively. Aquila becomes popular at her school, honoring her with a speech. When Georgia invites her to her house to celebrate, Aquila is pulled aside for an interview, leaving her friend alone. Larrabee watches the interview from home a little worried. 
At their next meeting, Aquila fails to get any of Larrabee's words right, as he senses that Aquila has gotten a little carried away, having missed the previous day's meeting. After an argument, Larrabee accidentally calls Aquila Denise, worrying her for not knowing who she is. Larrabee gives her flashcards with 5,000 possible words for the national competition. When Aquila wonders how she will learn so much in such a short time, Larrabee tells her that she will learn all that on her own, having nothing else to teach her and indicating that her coaching is over. Before leaving, a saddened Aquila leaves Larrabee the reason why she missed last day's class, a small Christmas gift for him. While studying, Aquila calls Georgia to go out together, but she replies angrily to go with her friends from the other school. Her family calls her to show that she appeared on TV, with the neighborhood celebrating how one of their own is achieving so much. However, Aquila leaves in tears and explains to her mother all the pressure she has felt lately. This forces Tanya to talk to Larrabee, explaining how Aquila's father was murdered when she was only six years old. Despite this, Larrabee feels that stopping teaching her is the right decision. Tanya talks to Aquila, explaining her initial fear of competition. When she was young, Tanya had a scholarship to medical school but left because she felt out of place, and didn't want the same fate for her daughter. Tanya agrees to be her new coach from now on. On her way to school studying, Aquila is surprised by her brother Terence, who pesters her with the flashcards. That's when Derek T shows up in his car, asking Terence about Aquila, as he had seen her on TV. Despite Terence's haughty attitude, Derek T tells him to stop fooling around and help his little sister with the competition, as he notices Aquila's determined look. He comments about how he won a fifth grade contest with a poem, and Aquila says she'd like to read it. Derek tells her she will once she wins the competition. Derek leaves, and Terence stays behind to help Aquila. Now Aquila is supported by various members of the community to study, including Mrs. Cross and Derek T himself with his gang. Upon finishing with her jump rope, Aquila notices the initials DL backslash on the rope handles, so she decides to visit Larrabee, indicating to him that she has already learned all 5,000 words. She also comments to him about how spelling was her grieving process during her father's death, and that this could serve Larrabee well during his mourning, leaving him the flashcards and jump rope. Larrabee confesses how his life fell apart after the death of his daughter Denise, who was just a couple of years younger than Aquila, and how he and his wife separated as a result, depressing him to continue teaching. She convinces him to stay by her side, and he convinces her to have the confidence to beat Dylan Chu. Aquila goes to George's house to make amends and ends up telling her how she is also invited to the competition in DC. Javier flies on the plane along with the girls, feeling a little queasy, but recovering after a kiss from Aquila on the cheek. In Washington, the children tour the White House, and during their evening conversation, Aquila decides to invite Dylan Chu to join them. As she goes to his room, she is greeted by his father, who tells her that Dylan is too busy studying. Aquila tells him that it's okay to get some rest, something that cheers Dylan up, but she is promptly tackled by his father, shutting the door on her, but not before Aquila leaves Dylan a can of soda. The next day, the national competition is about to begin, and among Aquila's ranks are Principal Welch, Larrabee, Tanya Georgia, and Devon. Everyone else watches Aquila on TV, giving support to her. She notices Dylan a little tense during the competition, knowing all the pressure on him. Some kids hit and some miss, with Javier, Dylan, and Aquila managing to advance several turns. There comes the point where Aquila must spell the word argillaceous, which makes her hesitate. She decides to simulate her jump rope during her thinking, managing to clear her mind and say the word correctly. In the 12th round, there are only five competitors left. Unfortunately, Javier fails to get the word Merovingian, disqualifying but not discouraging him. He wishes good luck to Aquila, who ends up being the finalist along with Dylan after a while. At a recess before the showdown, Aquila finds Dylan again being reprimanded by his father, who tells him that if he loses the competition, he will be in second place all his life, as this is the last year Dylan can compete because of his age. Larrabee shows up to tell Aquila that she has done a superb job and gave him the impetus to continue teaching. He notices something strange about Aquila and knows Dylan has something to do with it. Tanya thanks Larrabee for all he has done for her daughter, and then the competition begins. The commentators say that if one of the kids fails, their opponent has to spell the same word along with another one to win, and that it's hard to exhaust all 25 rounds of words, as the ones selected for the finals are too difficult to say correctly. Aquila notices that Dylan's dad is the only one who doesn't clap at the competition, even on his son's victories. When it's her turn to spell, she is given the word xanthosis, the same word Dylan asked her in their first meeting. To Larrabee and Dylan's surprise, Aquila misspells the word, giving him a chance to win. However, when it's Dylan's turn to say the word correctly, he too gets it wrong on purpose, asking for some water to make time. He tells Aquila that he knows she loses on purpose, and urges her not to lose like that. She tells him she's doing it for his father, but Dylan tells her that if she doesn't try hard, nothing will have been worth it for either of them. Now Aquila has to spell effleurage, which she accomplishes easily. Both children sweep through the words, coming out to the middle of the competition. They are told that if they make it to the end, they will both be co-champions, 
which has never happened. Now the two compete in a friendly manner, down to the last two words. Dylan manages to say his word, winning his part in the competition, so now it's up to Akila not to make a mistake. Akila's term ends up being pulchritude, the same word she missed when she met Larrabee in her first competition. She ends up spelling it right, winning and ending with a tie along Dylan. It all concludes with Akila remembering the support of everyone around her, feeling like she finally fits in the world. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.